Hello there internet dwellers, my name is Baz and welcome back to the channel. Today we are reacting to the Oddity Compendium by Dr. Nowhere. A lot of you actually recommended this to me on my Discord, but I believe my moderators probably zapped a load of spam from people uploading the same thing over and over. So from what I can see here, Sprite Z recommended this to me, but I know a bunch of you definitely recommended this to me. So thank you so much for the submission. I appreciate it. Dr. Nowhere started uploading six months ago and from there, it just took off completely. Like the, the first video they ever done, 3.9 million views. And I believe this was it. This was the, the, the kicker right here. And then the boiled one phenomenon was the next one. And they just have such a unique way of designing these horrific creatures. They make you feel unnerved. And everything that we see in these videos is done by Silas, their name is. 17 years old, by the way, which is absolutely insane. So keep that in mind. The video, the music, the art, the editing... All of it is done by Dr. Nowhere. So without further ado, guys, we're going to jump straight into this. The Oddity Compendium. Inst- Whoa. Dr. Nowhere's Office of Wonders presents the Oddity Compendium, a beginner's anomaly education program. Okay. A beginner's anomaly- the Right. Oddity Compendium. Today, we will be learning about many wonderful and strange oddities that exist inside of, outside of, and around your universe. These strange phenomena can reach anywhere from life firms, products, and organizations to... Wait, what the hell's the difference between outside and around? I'm get a uh, universe like that, that, that means like multiverse? It's an anomalous time period. Okay. Important. The following information has been acquired from realities that may be separate from the one you are currently residing in. Please be aware that knowledge or comprehension of incompatible information may result in a conscious reality fracture. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. What, what was with the South Pack little guitar chord then? All right. A conscious reality fracture is an event that may occur when an individual perceives material that originates from incompatible reality. Symptoms include migraines, excessive bouts of deja vu, instant death and more do you guys ever get like huge like waves of deja vu and it genuinely like i've i remember doing it one time where i guessed what the person was about to say but i don't know if that's just because we had similar conversations in the past installment number one four beds did i say that four forks beds a land of forgotten faces and geometric knowledge beyond belief installment number one what we will learn today your own bed may be harboring a hunger for your flesh. Sleep with a cold fan on if possible. I've got a fan right there that is usually on when I'm sleeping, so we're all good. I don't think it's cold though. That's the thing, it just blows warm air at me. If you ever walk downstairs one morning and your family is gone, interacting with the headless corpses that remain in their steads should be avoided. Non-existence is a contagious disease. If you're out in the middle of nowhere and you get a rush of brilliant ideas, turn back immediately. Enlightenment is a drug and the withdrawals can kill. I love the mind of this person. Just who thinks of this stuff, you know? Who thinks of this stuff? Flesh beds, populus cul culcita, is that what they're called? Category parasite. I'm keeping my eye on this bed right here. Flesh beds or mattress folk are species of parasitic subhuman that highly resemble bed mattresses. What did I just say? Looks just like who? Looks just like your bed. Well, this is going to put a f the fear of God into a lot of people. The body is a dormant flesh that appears identical to a standard mattress. Okay. However, slicing the thin sheet like skin reveals many soft organs, limb like appendages, and a humanoid head which hides beneath the skin. Uh. They were first discovered in the late 1960s when the yeah. mattress company was surveying excess storage. Upon finding many seemingly pristine mattresses that had not been sold, they gave them away to thrift shops and people in need. Oh, this is horrible, because if you think about it, all, like, the whole kind of thing about horror and monsters, like, the whole trope, is that there's monsters under your bed. But this is talking about the monster is your bed. The people who received the mattress folk initially had no issues with the faux beds. It wasn't okay. until the air began to warm up that these beds awoke from their uneven. Okay, well, that's not good. Do you know how hot it is in the UK right now? Today, it's fine. But it's been awful. The first recorded victim was 19-year-old Alistair. Alistair, why are people laughing? On a flesh bed for roughly six months before her sudden disappearance, 
She just got swallowed. Sulfur and rot originating from her head. Her family called authorities and the inside of the mattress revealed the feasting parasite. Several hundred human bones. Oh, jeez. Oh my god. The method in which mattress folks sustain themselves is by waiting for the body heat of a host to wake them from their dormant state. Kind of like an egg, but not nearly as tasty. Okay, wow. That's that's actually disturbing. Like, I don't like that one bit. After they wake, <clears throat> they slowly unfold them. This, this video is going to give you new phobias, guys. <laughs> the phobia of your own bed. After they awake, they slowly unfold themselves from their soft mattress-like bodies. From okay. Their soft mattress -like bodies. This process is very gradual and happens underneath its body or on its side so as not to be detected. Mm -hmm. After roughly a month of this process and on the night 17 degree Fahrenheit or higher, oh, we're screwed. the arms fully emerge and pull the sleeping host into its body where prey is slowly digested. Oh! A feast for a king. Is that a reference to the boiled one? Not much is known about how these sleeping beauties came about, but it is theorized that since they are subhuman, they were once a branch of Homo sapiens that merged with a missile network many years ago. Autopsies of flesh and digestive systems have revealed the Anna samples from thousands of different people in each instance, some yeah. even tracing to people born during the 1600s. Oh my god! Another odd thing to note is that the mattress folk themselves contain DNA belonging to humans as well. Yeah. One instance shared DNA in a blood type with Napoleon Bonaparte. No way. Leader of the French Republic during the time that the mattress folk were assumed to have come into existence. Okay. All in all, it might be a good idea to throw out that mattress that feels just a bit too warm lately. You know what's crazy? It does feel warm, but that's because it's warm, okay? So guys, if you live in America, or any country that just installs AC as standard, you're fine. Just put AC on in your room. You're never going to get eaten by your mattress. Out of context, that sounds really mad. In England, however, our homes are built to keep the heat in because we have mild temperatures and even cold temperatures all year round except for maybe two or three weeks of a heat wave and during that it feels like you're living in an oven so yeah we're, we're cooked basically L quite literally we are cooked you might be sharing it with something unwanted Ugh. good night sleep tight and don't let the bed bite don't let the bed bite i love this this is such like creative thinking like who would have thought to make a horror like about your mattress so that's just one of them headless a headless macrocosm, Munden Sincipita. So, so what, what's the... Let's try and say what that category is. Pseudolocation disease. Okay. A headless macrocosm is a subreality nearly identical to Earth save for the fact instead of humans, pale headless corpses remain in their stead. These corpses, though technically dead, do weakly breathe through the holes in their necks. Ah! Oh! Don't laugh at Their that! Have also been observed to begin convulsing at seemingly random intervals. Oh my goodness. These are identical in appearance to one another aside from physical dimensions, which can vary severely between each corpse. The headless sub people okay. in this pocket reality have been observed changing their behavior when humans have physically interacted with them and apparently okay. gain a level of awareness and vitality when such events occur. Okay, so humans interacting with these corpses breathe life into them? There are approximately 2,393 living humans residing in this reality. Oh, God. Every single resident recounts waking up in the headless macrocosm after falling asleep under strange circumstances back in their home reality. Okay, but what are these strange circumstances, please? Because I don't want to wake up and, like, go downstairs and see my housemate headless there, sitting on the couch trying to drink a cup of coffee. No one back in their own parallel homes remembers their faces or identities, which leads to the belief that this place could be a form of anti-reality. No one in their own parallel homes remembers their faces. A waste compartment of the universe used for aspects of reality that are useless or harmful to existential fabric. The humans that live in the headless macrocosm are uh -huh. assumed to be taking shelter in abandoned structures and banding together to search for plant-based food during the warmer times. Uh-huh. The climate in reality is yeah, often below freezing. During the warmer times. Oh my god. What a fact. Imagine waking up, guys, going downstairs, and just seeing corpses. Humans have coined multiple terms and nicknames for these headless corpses, such as stumpies, cranes, and ichabodies. Stumpies is crazy. From main reality, an incident took place which created a temporary tear between the two. 
Oh. The man residing in the headless macrocosm was walking through a field with a small house in the center. Uh -huh. Upon reaching the house, the man unintentionally brushed up against one of the grieving bodies. Oh. His body, just before motionless aside from the labored convulsions, sprang to life and removed the head of the man. It then proceeded to attach the severed head to the stump of its own neck. Oh shit, it gave the itself... Name. It gave itself head. Okay, good one, Ryan. Was my my neck lying? Wait, wait, their name was what? The stump of its own neck. The man's name... Michael Tedford. Was my my neck lying? Really? After the corpse had placed Michael's head where its own should be, an event occurred back on Earth in the year 2061 that resulted oh, no. in governmental intervention. The instant of 2061. The call to the authorities described an impossibly tall naked figure appearing in their backyard. The presence of this oddity was highly distressing to the family, and they remained inside their home until the situation was resolved. Uh -huh. The following photograph depicts this figure they spoke of. Michael Tedford's rotting head is affixed atop its frail neck. The face you are looking for no longer exists. After the photo was taken, what was left of Tedford's existence was removed from the premises and taken to an upscale anomaly testing site. Right. Thirdly, this corpse was attempting to quite literally become Tedford by reaching off of his existence. Oh my These god. Bodies appear to be in a constant hang on, hang on. Okay, yeah, yeah. By okay. Off of his existence. These breathing bodies appear to be in a constant state of yearning to reconnect with the roots of reality again, as they have been taken a hold of by a dangerous and contagious disease. Right. This disease appears to be non-existence itself. It can affect anyone on Earth at any time, and once it takes hold, the headless macrocosm deems you valid for residence within its endless meadows, filled with fellow patients. Oh, but just... Disease appears to be non-existence. It can affect anyone on Earth at any time, and once it takes hold, the headless macrocosm deems you valid for residence. It can happen to anyone. What, you can, your head can just disappear? But don't worry, it's a rare diagnosis. I, okay. Fun fact. Occasionally. Fun fact. These are fun facts, by the way, guys. Rude man made structures will form seemingly out of nowhere in order to correspond with the structures on parallel Earth. As mentioned earlier, the headless macrocosm itself functions like a digestive tract of the universe, and these structures may be antibodies attempting to fight off the virus of non-existence. That is that is so hard to wrap your head around. How that? How do you even think about that? Check your head. Screwed on tight. Great, because you might want to hang on tight to it for this next one. Oh, good lord! For this next one. What's the next one? Obelisks of enlightenment. Uh. Enigmatic divinity. The obelisks of enlightenment are okay. a collective of monolithic beings that are currently residing in different remote locations across the world. Okay. Also known as the Fathers of True North, they appear in groups of 1 to 8 and stand anywhere from 10 to 150 feet tall. Wow, okay. The obelisk is levitating just barely above the ground and facing geodetic north. Though most of them reside in remote feet. Facing as in like the face is facing north. Hills and deserts, they have also been found floating above the ocean within the vicinity. Oh, that's terrifying. Even near the triangle and even on the moon. On the moon? Just ever so slightly and progress approximately two inches forward a year. These obelisks are, Where are they going? the infinitely vast secrets of the universe and are constantly vocalizing the excess information as a means of ways to counteract the overwhelming intake. Okay. Okay, they're vocalizing the excess information as a means to counteract the overwhelming intake of knowledge. So they've got loads of stuff coming in, and they can't stop it coming in, and in order for them to kind of counter that, they, they what, making sounds? Oh god, they're like sirens. Folklore often refers to the frequency as the sun of the divine contour. Oh dear. The obelisk's biological elements are unraveled thousands of feet into the sky to make a metaphysical connection from Earth to the universe. Right. Assume this is a form of knowledge worship, an attempt to make a mortal sacrifice for an immortal honor. Fun fact. These organs are confirmed to be those of the humans and other biological matter that were absorbed after... These organs are confirmed to be those of the humans and other biological matter that were absorbed after enlightenment. Upon perceiving the words spoken by the obelisks or entering into close proximity with them, the human brain either spontaneously expands and combusts or receives an ability to comprehend the sacred information. Talk about being open-minded. 
Comprehend the sacred information. Okay, so the information is so... It's either the information is so great that it just makes your head explode, or you can take it all in. But I'm, just, I'm, I'm assuming that would send you insane. The subject is able to comprehend this knowledge. They are biologically absorbed into the anomalous, becoming wholly unified with a being. It is oh, not okay. We understood how these anomalies were brought into existence, but they seem to be tears in the fabric of reality akin to black holes. Oh, wow, they okay. That these rifts were opened by ancient giants who were dissatisfied with a lack of Earth's knowledge. Interesting. Naturally large humanoid skeletons. It's the freaking Anunakai, or uh, what, how, however you say it. An, 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 uh, you know what I mean. Underground adjacent to obelisk sites, further supporting this idea. When the obelisks made their debut on Earth, they aided in the construction of the pyramids of Giza by bestowing. Okay, hang on. I need to read it because I know it's being said to me, but I need to actually read it to bring it in. Obelisks made their debut on Earth. They aided in the construction of the pyramids of Giza. Now, it's crazy because uh, people are saying that, like, how were the pyramids built? Because it just makes no sense, like, how much the stones weighed and how big the structures were. Where did they get the rocks from? How did they form? Like, people were saying that there were alien-like technology, at least tech alien technology that was helping them. Um, but I don't know. Of sacred knowledge onto Egyptian Pharaoh Kufu after he was lured into the desert by their beckoning cords. Okay. This knowledge would help Kufu rationalize a possible blueprint and method for building these grand tombs. Okay. And they were made into the shapes of pyramids as a tribute to the divine structures. All Interesting. In all, these obelisks may seem malevolent, but it's important to remember that no physical pain could ever outweigh the agony of infinite knowledge. What, what? Damn. That was a freaking bear. No physical pain could ever outweigh the agony of infinite knowledge. My. Well, yeah, imagine just knowing everything. That's crazy. Things that you don't want to know. I can imagine, yeah. Oof. Oh. Poor guys. I love that. I just love the little South Pack, like, transitional chords there. Uh, looks like our time here may be almost up. Uh huh. But before you go, it's time for Bulbasaki. Yay! Let's go, baby. What what other freaking horrors, abstract horrors, Philbus? This is Philbus. It is not known where Philbus comes from or why he is here, but there have been a number of people who, after consuming media depicting Philbus, have felt the overwhelming compulsion. Oh, so it's a freaking info hazard. Thanks. Great. So the bonus. Oddity is an info hazard. To practice Philbism. Philbism is a political and somewhat religious ideology which centers around the belief that building slash consuming shares and other wooden furniture is honoring Philbus great sacrifice. It is not clear what this sacrifice is or what it refers to. Right. Some practices of Philbism include learning to build chairs. Okay. Learning to properly digest chairs. What? How do you... What? Promoting slash discussing chair consumption on obscure internet forums. Okay. What's even happening right now? A political candidate known as Philbus, who is said to advocate for making furniture consumption a socially accepted and widespread practice. There are so many... This is uh, some Rick and Morty character right here. Philbus, the chair eater. <laughs> I don't really want to eat my chair, man. On the subject will eventually result in it becoming a sponsorship or advertisement of sorts. We have no idea how to avoid this, sorry. What? Philbists will deny the existence of Philbism when directly questioned about it. This video was not in any way sponsored by Philbism. <laughs> this is for educational purposes only. Philism does not even exist. It doesn't exist. You can sign up for Philbism certification here. Consume the body of Philbus today. Eat your chair. Unsafe and or viral material detected. It's just about time for us to part ways. No, I want to learn more about these oddities. This purely auditory procedure will ensure you do not come away from this with any ailments from beyond contract during your viewing experience. Oh, that's very nice of you. Please close your eyes and do not open them until told to do so. Okay. Now. Okay, we get... I'm... I'm scared. Oh, jeez! How now I'm not closing my eyes? Oh, I don't like this. 
What even is this sound? You may now open your eyes. Thank you for complying. I... Thank you for attending Dr. Nowhere's Office of Wonders. Brilliant. We hope that you enjoyed your stay. Yeah, that's... Doctor's appointment, jeez. Goodbye, we love you. Oh, that's very nice of you. Isn't that really nice of you? The, I gotta say, I, I love the, l these little, um... I just love these little creations. Like, they're so creative and unique. And just... I, in a thousand years, probably wouldn't think about anything like this. And you've got to have such a unique mind to even think about stuff like this. you got to think, like... Okay, what is the strangest thing I could possibly think of? And I still wouldn't be able to do that. These wouldn't even come up. The one about the mattress was really cool, I think. All of them were really good, but that one's like its own horror right there. That, that one could be like genuinely make people unnerved and checking their bed. Because you check under your bed for monsters, right? When you were a kid, you don't think of actually checking the bed itself. My God, keep your rooms cool, guys. That's all I'm going to say. That was Dr. Nowhere, guys. Absolutely phenomenal creator. Uh, rightfully so. They they deserve all the success they've got. And you guys definitely should go subscribe. Like the videos. Go check out the past videos. I've reacted to them myself. But go check out the original content for yourself because it's honestly really, really good. And you guys will really enjoy it if you enjoyed this one. If you guys enjoyed what you saw today, be sure to leave a like, rate, and subscribe as this is the majority of my content. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, guys.